Welcome to the Friends of the Japanese Garden Virtual Winter Festival. Due to COVID-19, we're unable to have the festival at the Ichimura Miami Japan Garden. Once it's safe, we promise to invite you back to the garden. And now, please welcome the Yashiko Taiko Dojo.
And now a word from the Council General of Japan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Ichimura Gardens Virtual Shichigo Sound Festival to celebrate Japanese culture. Due to the COVID 19 pandemic, many cultural activities have been cancelled and suspended. Culture is, however, an indispensable part of our lives. I especially miss the festivals such as the one in Ichimura Japanese Garden. This is why I am extremely happy that the Friends of the Japanese Garden decided to host this virtual event. The organizers likely faced many difficulties under the current unusual circumstances. So let me congratulate the organizers and the volunteers in celebration of their first virtual event. I hope you enjoy today's presentations of Japanese culture and I look forward to seeing everyone in person at the next festival in Ichimura Japanese Garden. Thank you. Now back to the main stage where we have the magic of Ronsted. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have something new to show you. So new, in fact, that um, I haven't really had time to practice it or learn it. Fortunately, I also have the recorded instructions with me. So I'm going to ask Rick Del Vecchio to please play the recorded instructions. Hello, I am the Great Grandissimo. King of Magicians and Magician of Kings. Thank you for purchasing my $100 bottle to glass trick. And as always, may all your miracles be grandissimo. First, you will need two tubes, one bottle and one glass. The idea of this trick is to make the bottle change places with the glass and the glass change places with the bottle. In order for this trick to be successful, the glass must be the same distance from the bottle as the bottle is from the glass. Let's start this trick. Cover the bottle with one of the tubes and the glass with the other. Make a magical gesture. Don't overact. And the glass and the bottle have changed places. Don't lift the tubes yet. They're only going to pretend they change places. That's the $100 secret. You only pretend. That's it. Just pretend. Let's start over. Cover the bottle with one tube and the glass with the other. Now make a magical gesture and the glass and the bottle have now changed places. Remember the secret? Now the hard part is making them change back. Make another magical gesture. Much better. And now you can lift the tubes, showing they're back to their original position. You just learned the famous $100 bottle to glass trick. Now I know what you're thinking. Money well spent. Sometimes your audience won't be fooled by this method. So you have to try another approach. Again, cover the bottle, and then cover the glass. Make a magical gesture showing the bottle becomes the glass, and the glass becomes the bottle. And then back again. Any questions? Now remember the tube on the left is the tube that goes over the bottle, and the tube on the right, wait, wait a minute, Oh, that's too many bottles. The tube on the right goes over the glass, which immediately makes the glass become the bottle and the bottle become the glass. Now remember the tube on the right is the tube that goes over the bottle and the tube on your left. Oh, that's too many bottles. The tube on your left 
goes over the glass, which immediately makes the glass become the bottle and the bottle become the glass. Therefore, you cover the glass with the tube, which immediately becomes the bottle and the bottle becomes, you guessed it, the glass. But to do that, you need another bottle. You see, the tube covers the glass, which immediately becomes the bottle, and the bottle becomes, you guessed it, the glass, but to do that, you need another bottle. Any questions? At this point, some people might ask you how this trick works. Some people might know how this trick works. And most people just don't care. They will accuse you of using more than one glass. Of course, you know there is never more than one glass. Maybe a bottle from here, or from here, but never an extra glass. Of course, this trick to really work, you need two more bottles. Now, you've just learned the famous $100 bottle and glass trick. Remember, don't tell the audience how the trick works, and you can take your bow. And now please enjoy this short video about the traditional Japanese tea ceremony. Sado, or the way of tea, is a centuries-old Japanese tradition. Records show that tea was first introduced to Japan for medicinal purposes between the 7th and 9th centuries. Over time, Sado developed from Zen Buddhist traditions into the art form we know today. By the 17th century, different styles of tea ceremony were being performed as entertainment throughout Japan. The concept of Japanese hospitality, or omotenashi, is rooted in the tea ceremony tradition. Developed by great tea master Sen no Rikyu, Omotenashi is based on thoughtful service and mutual respect between the host and the guest. The host anticipates the needs of the guest and fulfills them wholeheartedly, without ever being asked directly. In return, the guest acknowledges this service and shows appreciation for their host. During the tea ceremony, Guests should complement the decorative elements of the tea room and tea bowl, as well as the tea itself and the accompanying sweets, known as wagashi.
おしまいにいたしますIkibana is the Japanese art of flower arrangement. Let's watch Akiko Iwata in action. Hi, um, good morning, or good afternoon. And today uh, we have a little Japanese flower arrangement um, you can do at home. Um, we show you uh, some different ways to easy to make it a Japanese style. Um, if you know uh, Ikebana, Japanese flower arrangement, you may see like this one. And the basic uh, form is like uh, unsymmetric. So one branch called longer this side and shorter this side, you see kind of triangle. That's kind of different between Japanese style and Western style flower arrangement. So this is one example I made. You see a tulip go down to this and have some triangle shape. This is vertical style. We have another one here. It's a horizontal. It's, um, this is Kenzan. You may not see here today. We all, I already made it. But you see the branch is going this way and the flower is standing that way. You see, we try to appreciate the nature of the trees. So trees is not have to be straight. It's maybe curving this way and that way so that you really enjoy natural trees. Now, today, I want to show you what you can do. You always have this one, right? Uh, plastic bottles from any trees. So you cut this. So you keep this part, and um, if you have a OIC 
pieces. You have this one and then going, just push down to have oasis in a bottle like this. And of course, you need to soak water. So now it's already wet. This is a flower when I use today. Okay, what I do first, maybe I'm gonna do um, this flower look more Japanese style. You take extra leaves. And usually it's better to cut in the water so that flowers stay longer. from your garden. See? Maybe you're gonna use this so that you may have uh, buy flower at the flower shop, but you can get this from your garden. And maybe today we make a little maluk spring. some different colors but it's better not to, to put too many colors so that you appreciate the each one this one also you may find topos at your garden so you see it Right now, it's like this. Maybe I want to put more of this. Okay, in this way. This is a front, so you put the flower this way, so you see the front of the flowers, and you don't see the voices too much. Now, you don't want to this part, right? So you're going to have some uh, fabric. Maybe waterproof fabric is better. Or you can just cut out plastic tablecloths. You can find Wanderlust store. In this case, I'm going to wrap up. Have some kind of ribbons. And tie it up. Yeah. See so you don't see it. Now this one. one. Another one. I just discovered interesting things. This is, you know, mason jar you have at the, uh, your home. But maybe this is the empty uh, glass cups had a jelly before. And this top of the lid, I find one dollar store. So you see all this grid here? So you place this one. Get the flower. Here. So always make sure the lower height, middle height, and higher one. It's not like all the same height. So it looks more interesting. Actually, this is, um, I used this first time, so I kind of experiment here with you. Okay. I'm 
some greens. This is you also find at your home. Yeah, I want to get another different one. Different colors. So this is another edition. Many times for Japanese style flower arrangement, we don't put too many things. We kind of have more spaces, so it's kind of looks flowing. Now this is looks nicer. You do you you can keep like this, but you want to be more fancy. Of course, you can kind of like this. this. Get some ink on it as a spoon. You can use any cute ribbons. For now, I just use simple ones so that you can maybe give somebody for the birthday. It's kind of nice. One. You can cut extra part or just, you know, keep as a drop on <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> okay. And the last one, a little different. Now this. Okay, again, I use plastic bottles. Of course, you can have a nice base. You already have at home, right? And this plant, okay, this is my friend give me from her garden. I will put this here. I kind of, you know, break the uh, branches because it stays better. This is a, a one of the tree, if you don't have oasis. And then maybe we're gonna get a little interesting little branches. Okay, and um, something different. Maybe. Just uh, appreciate some oranges. You just enjoy that how color matches. Sometimes you need to. Experiment how you want it. The point is, we need to adjust um, your uh, wishes, how it look like, into the nature because nature doesn't grow as we want. The shape is all different. The kind of uh, branches or leaves. So that's your part, really think how you want it. And then you kind of taste, okay, here, oh, it's a little higher. Maybe I get shorter one here. Okay, how is that? What do you think? Good? You see this orange? Orange, a little yellow flower. 
and then this um, branch kind of works holding the flower stems. And of course, you should have better base. <laughs> but again, this one can be loved with paper or something. Always looks nice and give to somebody as a gift. So today, I just show you a Japanese flower uh, arrangement, how you can try at your home. I hope you enjoy that. And one day we want to try it together again. Thank you. And now, a martial arts demonstration, courtesy of Sensei Robert Young. And now, from Palmetto Senior High, the fabulous Soran dancers. Each knee, each knee, son. Hey!
fabulous Soran dancers. Each knee, each knee, side, hey! We wish to thank our corporate sponsors, Rico Corporation, who created the garden over 50 years ago, and Bird Road Subaru and Subaru America for their years of support. And now, a cooking demonstration by Maya Nakamura. Hi, my name is Maya Ko, and I'm going to be cooking today is Japanese stir fry noodle. It's called yakisoba. I already made some this morning. And this is very easy, simple, and whatever you have in your fridge. Today I have some cabbage, some bean sprout, and some mushrooms. This a little bit uh, like Asian mushrooms, so anything if you like carrots, if you like uh, some kale, whatever. So I'm just making some thin sliced pork here, and I'm going to add some cabbage. And some bean sprout. This is a very easy way to fix your lunch or dinner, and you can have lots of vegetables in it. And only thing it's very typical Japanese is this seasoning right here. It's called oh, bulldog soy sauce. No soy sauce. It's vegetable it says good sauce. This one. And I definitely suggest you get it from Asian stores. And some noodles. If you can find Japanese or Asian noodles like this, it's a yakisoba, you can use thin spaghetti. So it's very flexible. So I'm going to be stir frying now, and you can see. And once it's almost done, I already heat up this noodle, so you're going to mix it. And for the seasoning, you can just use this one. And it's everybody's favorite in Japanese kids, so or everybody likes to eat this. It's a quick way to fix your lunch. And I don't, too bad you can't smell this one because it smells wonderful now. But as you can hear, it's sizzling and almost done. So let me just kind of close it and heat it up through. So it took about like, oh, I have to chop the vegetable beforehand, but probably like all together 15 minutes. So it's cooking. It's a way to fix your dinner, lunch, and you can enjoy with vegetable. Thank you. We would also like to thank our community partners, Jungle Island, Lanpan Asian Cafe, Ocean Press, the Consul General of Japan, the South Miami Coral Gables Elks Lodge 1676, Sid Burson IBM Ring 45, and Club Magico Miami. And now, the Japanese Girl Day presentation by Michio Ishi Sloan. Every year on March 3rd, people in Japan celebrate a holiday called Ina Matsu. The English translation of this holiday is the Doll Festival. And it is it's sometimes referred to as a girl's day. It is a day dedicated to celebrating the daughters of the family, to honor her and to pray that she will have the long, happy, healthy life. This tradition began over 1,000 years ago in the Heian period, when the Japanese people of that time Born with the doll made up the straw into the small balls and then send them down to the river or out the sea. The ritual was believed to send the spirit away and allow their children to be protected. This practice is called Hina Nagashi or doll 
for clothing is no longer widespread, but still occurs in a few areas. In modern times, families present their young daughters with the gift of the handmade doll in the traditional clothing of the Korean period, which is ancient folk costumes. Usually, the gift of the traditional style dolls is given to a young girl in February and are displayed prominently in the house until the 3rd of the March. They also eat the various food for the good luck, such as the chirashi sushi, clam soup, mochi, and a snack called hina arari. Chirashi sushi. This is a chirashi sushi. Chirashi sushi is vinegar rice with the toppings such as the sashimi and seasoned vegetables. But this is only a uh, vegetable and some seafood, cooked seafood. Chirashi for a girl's day normally includes the shrimps for longevity, live until the back is back. The lotus roots to see a head, beans for steady health, and kinshi tamago, the, um, the, the yellow golden uh, threaded carrot eggs, is for symbolizing wellness. They are good luck food. The clam soup. Now normally we use a shell called the hamaguri. The reason why the girls celebrate eat, eating with the clam soup is because the shells are all unique. There aren't any pair that they are the same and they fit perfect, perfectly together and join pair. This symbolizes marriage blood. And also sakurayu. Sakurayu is the pickled uh, cherry blossom and it flowers inside of hot water when you pour the hot water. These are Japanese girls' they go. On your left side is the, the emperor and right side is the empress. And then flowers of the uh, white plum and pink plum, which is the color of a celebration. And then normally we uh, decorate with the cherry blossom or the peach flower and also a citrus flower. So we have a story of the peach flower. The peach is supposed to be um, holy fruit. In uh, Japanese ancient mythology, the peach is to uh, take the bad spirit away, be used. So, this is my Girls' Day presentation. Thank you very much. And now, welcome back to the main stage, Yoshiko Taiko Dojo.
let's hear it for Yashiko Taiko Dojo. This festival is made possible with the support of the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor and Board of County Commissioners. Thank you for watching.